So you want to So I just woke up and <clears throat> got a message from my best friend. It says Wake up, Crystal. We should like print some stuff and like coupon or something like that might be kinda cool. You better get on up here so we can do that. Okay? Come on over. Bye. Amy, it's cold outside. Hey, you should come on over and we'll make some stuff. Hey, Amy. I gotta get out of bed. I'm so lazy. Oh, but we'll have fun. Okay, it'll be cool. I'm my best friend. It says, Wake up, Crystal. We got stuff to do. Hey, it's Amy, um, back here with two Weston girls. Um, my husband has a coat, a waist, or excuse me, a suit coat, and it's missing a button. And I didn't find out about this until just recently, or I've repaired it sooner, but I thought this would be a great time for tutorial. So he's got this coat, and the front lapel is missing a button. The threads are still there, so I can kind of get an idea of the kind of thread that was used previously, and that's important when sewing a button back on, because you want an appropriate weight of thread for the fabric that you're using. If you use a stronger thread than the fabric that you're actually putting the button on, uh, sometimes it can tear through or mess up that fabric or cause gaping in the, the actual warp and weft of the threads. So it's important that you um, try to find the right thread. So I looked around this coat, obviously, if you look at it, it's a 55% polyester, 45% worsted wool blend. Uh, it says the lining is acetate too. So we know that it's a poly wool blend or a synthetic and wool blend. So I'm going to look for a thread, and it doesn't have to be a perfect matching color, especially considering that this button that's going to be replaced, if I can find it, is a shank button. And a shank button basically is a button that has the front, and you don't see the little eyes the thread goes through, but it has a little toggle on the back that the thread is, the thread is sewn through. Um, so this kind of sewing I'm going to do today for this button and this replacement is for a shank button sewn back onto, for example, if you have a pair of pants or jeans, um, probably outer garments, if you see a, a heavier toggle or shank button like this. Um, some lighter weight clothes have a little four hold buttons that you see too, and I'll, I'll try to do a tutorial on that in the future too, but I thought this is a, a nice way to show you how to replace a button on a garment that's missing a button. So, if you'll give me just a second, we'll come right back and I'll kind of show you a close-up of the stitching and getting my thread ready and all that stuff. So I've got my husband's uh, coat here and it's going to need a button replaced. You can see the threads are kind of hanging. I'm going to want to remove those threads but also keep an eye on where that spot is at on the coat because I'm going to put that shank button right back in the same position. So if you want to take a pin, you can take a little pin and mark that spot because X is going to mark the spot. I need to check button seam allowances from the edge but gen there's a general guide. I think it's three quarters of an inch roughly and a lot of this depends on the width of your buttons too. If you have three eighths, five eighths, one inch or so forth, depending on the size of your button, the spacing that you have from the edge of the garment. In any case, just mark it um, and get that where you have that. Remove the extra or the old threads. Okay, so then I'm going to find an appropriate needle for the weight of this garment. Um, probably like a, a nice sharp would be good. I'm going to find an appropriate thread. I think a cotton poly blend will probably be good for this one since it's a poly wool. You won't have wool thread, of course, but you'll have uh, blended cottons and linens and such and so forth. Um, roll off about for a button. You're only going to need probably a foot and a half, two feet of thread. If you want a little extra, it doesn't hurt to have extra. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and cut a piece of thread. This one probably is roughly a little over two feet-ish something. Um, take and thread your thread through the eye of the needle. And if you have decent light, that's easier. If not, use a little threader if it helps. In the case of sewing this button back on, um, I'm going to use a two ply. And a lot of times when you're sewing garments, a one ply is good enough than putting a knot at the end. But I'm going to put a little loop at the end of my threads that I have together. If you can see that, I hope you can. So I'm going to put one loop there. I'm going to make another knot right on top of that one. And this is going to knot the end of my thread. I'm doing this on purpose because I want that thread to be stopped in the garment intentionally so that when I attach this, everything works out well. So I've marked on the back of my garment with a pin where the hole was previously, and I hope that you can see that. So through to the front, I'm gonna feel to the front and find out where that spot is and go through. I'm gonna start my stitching on the front face of the garment. 
And the reason why is with the shank button, all of the threads and the things that you have on this side of the garment are hidden. Now, if you have a big, long fur ball on the end of that, snip that piece off just down to where it's close to the knot, maybe like an eighth of an inch or a sixteenth of an inch from the end, but you have a secure knot there. Then I'm going to feed my needle through that fabric, and I'm going to come back up through, and usually I go back through again and do a second through, but you want, don't want to do too much in that same spot too. And you have to remember too, some garments have an extra piece of fabric in here to help produce a little bit of, it acts like interfacing to help strengthen this part of the fabric in the garment so that you don't rip if the button or the uh, opening or the button and the buttonhole are to be pulled, for example, if you get caught on something so it doesn't rip through the fabric. So it is important not to overburden that same spot in the fabric. But I'm going to come back up through. I'm going to go through the shank of my button now. And I'm going to sew through probably at least three times as recommended. I'd recommend, depending on the weight of your thread and the weight of the garment too, sometimes you don't want to go through more than mostly uh, three or four times for lightweight garments or lightweight fabrics. For jean or denim fabric or cotton duck or something like that, you might do a little, one or two more. Um, cotton duck and things like that, of course, are heavier weight materials. Um, make sure each time that when you're sewing through, you go back through that shank. So I'm going to go through the shank again. And I've not tightened it completely up against the garment yet, and there's a reason for this. With shank buttons, it's important that they have this little bit of play in the toggle of the buttons. And the reason why is if you have a thicker garment, for example, an out, outer garment like a coat or a jacket, um, you have a bulkier fabric, and you want the button to be able to sit up above this fabric just slightly so that when the garment is actually buttoned, it doesn't pull or pucker back down into this fabric when it's buttoned and pull unnaturally against the front of the lapel or whatever part of the garment that you're restitching. So I've gone through, I believe, twice. I'm going to make sure I hit the shank and go through the shank of the button each time. Oh, and guess what? I went to the wrong button. Let me get back to the correct button. Oh my goodness. So Amy's going to sew through again, and I've not fully tightened it back up. And I'm also watching, too, that I'm not producing an accidental knot. So it's still just a little bit loose in there. Hope that you can see that by stitching. Um, but I'm gonna go through one more time, watching not to knot my thread because Amy can be a really little terror with that. I have to watch that I don't overdo things. So I'm gonna stitch through again. And that's three times. Now my thread is just slightly lighter than the thread that was there. I think it's a similar or a blend that is akin to what was on here, but it's just a lighter weight thread, probably less ply. Um, I'm going to go back through and up to the top on the outer part of the garment. And now those threads that I made, I'm going to wrap around. It's like one of those was a bit sloppy. Yeah. You kind of want to make sure that you tug those snug too so that they are, um, the thread is evenly distributed and you don't have extra loops or excess thread under there either because that can pull later on and your button can come really loose. I think I've gotten most out of the way. In any case, I'm going to go ahead and wrap around the shank. One, two, three, maybe even a fourth time. And then I'm going to go back through to the bottom, back out to the inside of the garment. And I still, I can take my pin out now because I already know where I'm going to sew this back at. Um, I'm going to come back up to the outer part of the garment one more time. Oh, Amy has made a mess. Oh, look at that. The messy stitcher extraordinaire. Look at that. Amy, Amy Briggs. Crazy, crazy lady. So, anyway, I'm going to go back out to the exterior part of the garment. And to finish off my buttonhole here, so the button is now in place and we've repaired it. You see it's back on. Yay, I hope you can see that and I hope that my camera work is not horrible. Um, but once I'm back out, um, I'm going to wrap around that button and go through and make my knots right up against that shank work. That's that threading that's right under there. I'm going to wrap again and back out and knot that off. And that should, if you snug it, not too, too tight so you're not yanking on the fabric really, really hard. Um, if you have a little insecurity about how well you're knotting is, go back through one more time through the, the bulk of your shank there, under, it's the threads underneath the shank, and snug it. And I'll do one more. I, I'm notorious for over knotting, like the lady who wants no garment to ever come apart. I'm gonna snug that up one more time and then get your little um, your little needlework scissors or your embroidery scissors and just snip fairly close. 
And if it's a little messy, you can kind of push it back out of the way. When you rebutton the garment, for the most part, those threads will remain behind on that lapel that has the button rather than the buttonholes. But from here, we can rebutton. Oh, John Briggs. Sorry. Here we can rebutton though, and I've got my husband's jacket hopefully repaired his coat. So he will have a repaired garment to wear. Yay! So hopefully he will be happy about that. Thank you for joining me on Two West End Girls.